from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, September the 30th, 2024. We open with the targeted killing Friday night of the leader of terror group Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah. Take it out in a massive Israeli airstrike on Hezbollah's underground headquarters in Beirut. Some 20 other Hezbollah terrorists, including senior commanders, were also killed in the airstrike. Early Saturday morning, the IDF confirmed the terror leader's death, writing Hassan Nasrallah will no longer be able to terrorize the world. And IDF spokesperson Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari had more. For decades, Hezbollah, under the command of Hassan Nasrallah, orchestrated countless attacks against innocent people. Hassan Nasrallah had the blood of thousands of men, women, children on his hands. Israeli, Jews, Jews across the world, Lebanese, Americans, British, French, Syrians, and other countless victims across the Middle East and beyond. Hassan Nasrallah, the leader of an evil terrorist organization, the senior terrorists eliminated with him, and the central headquarters were a legitimate military target under international law. Hagari noted Hezbollah's unprovoked attacks on Israel that began on October the 8th of last year, one day after the Hamas massacre, and its non-stop firing of rockets, missiles and drones at Israel since, as well as Hezbollah's plan of an even larger massacre of its own on northern Israel, which the IDF thwarted. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, in an address to the Israeli people on Saturday, called the terror chief the axis of the axis, the main engine of Iran's axis of evil, saying he and his people were the architects of the plan to destroy Israel. The Prime Minister said the elimination of Nasrallah is a necessary condition in achieving the objectives we have set returning the residents of the north safely to their homes and changing the balance of power in the region for years. It also, he said, advances the return of our hostages in the south. Netanyahu was back in Israel after addressing the United Nations General Assembly in New York City Friday morning. And we will have that speech coming up for you after this newscast tonight at 6.30 Eastern Time. U.S. President Joe Biden said of the Nasrallah elimination that he and the terrorist group he led, Hezbollah, were responsible for killing hundreds of Americans over a four-decade reign of terror, saying his death from an Israeli airstrike is a measure of justice for his many victims, including thousands of Americans, Israelis, and Lebanese civilians. Biden saying Nasrallah on October the 8th made the fateful decision to join hands with Hamas and open what he called a northern front against Israel, saying the U.S. fully supports Israel's right to defend itself against Hezbollah, Hamas, the Houthis, and any other Iranian-supported terrorist groups. Biden noting that he was enhancing the defense posture of U.S. military forces in the Middle East region to deter aggression and reduce the risk of a broader regional war. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris echoed Biden's sentiment and said today Hezbollah's victims have a measure of justice. Harris reaffirming, I have an unwavering commitment to the security of Israel. I will always support Israel's right to defend itself against Iran and Iran-backed terrorist groups such as Hezbollah, Hamas, and the Houthis. And stress that she and Biden have been working on a diplomatic solution along the Israel-Lebanon border so that people can safely return home on both sides of that border saying diplomacy remains the best path forward to protect civilians and achieve lasting stability in the region. Meanwhile, rockets and drones have continued to bombard northern Israel from Lebanon all weekend and into today.
And on Saturday, a missile was launched at the outskirts of Jerusalem from Lebanon. It landed in an open area just east of the capital. No injuries were reported. And a missile was launched again at central Israel, the IDF said, by the Houthis in Yemen. The IDF said it successfully intercepted the missile outside of Israeli territory. And in response, the IDF targeted the Houthi-controlled Yemeni port city of Hodeida. And an explosive-laden drone was fired at the southernmost Israeli resort city of Eilat yesterday, reportedly by the Iran-backed Islamic resistance in Iraq. That was intercepted. Israel continues to respond to the rocket and drone attacks from Lebanon, hitting Hezbollah terror targets, including today a surface-to-air missile launcher storage facility positioned, the IDF said, less than a mile from Lebanon's international airport, noting that the missiles pose a threat to international airspace, and continuing to dismantle the terror group, taking out a number of additional top terrorists in Lebanon, including, the IDF said yesterday, the commander of Hezbollah's Preventative Security Unit, who was also a member of their executive council and was directly engaged in terrorist attacks against the state of Israel. And today, saying that it took out the head of the Lebanon branch in the Hamas terrorist organization, responsible for coordinating Hamas's terror activities in Lebanon with Hezbollah operatives. He was also an accredited member of the U.N. relief agency UNRWA, the IDF said, and was the head of the UNRWA Teachers Union in Lebanon. The IDF also eliminated two leaders in the Lebanon branch of the PFLP terrorist organization, who it said took part in planning and carrying out terror attacks against Israel and directed terror activities in Judea and Samaria, the West Bank. The IDF's Northern Command also said today that it is preparing for the next stages in the fighting against Hezbollah. The IDF continues as well to fight Hamas in Gaza and today said a soldier was seriously injured by anti-tank fire. The IDF yesterday saying, as we continue to fight in a multi-front war, we are operating in Gaza in order to bring our hostages home and dismantle Hamas and shared video of a recently discovered Hamas terror tunnel. The hostages who remain held captive by Hamas in Gaza have now been held for 360 days. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Monday, September the 30th at 7, Gilad Kariv offers his insights on the situation in the Middle East, as well as diaspora relations from both an Israeli and rabbinic perspective in a program from Central Synagogue. At 7.40, I speak with Ambassador Marina Rosenberg about the urgent need for the U.N. and world governments to combat anti-Semitism and anti-Israel bias in this post-October 7th world. At 8, Abigail Pogrebin speaks with Rabbi Elliot Cosgrove to discuss his new book, For Such a Time as This, on Being Jewish Today which chronicles his response to the horrors of October the 7th and his diagnosis of the changed landscape for Jewish identity and connection. And then at 8.30, Abigail Pogrebin speaks to author Mitch Albom to talk about his novel, The Little Liar. That is followed by Matzah Book Soup with the latest literary recommendation from Lily and Amanda. At 9, Fran Klagsbrunn is on L'Chaim. At 10, IDF Major General in Reserve Nadav Padan gives an update following the elimination of Nasrallah. That's followed by a replay of the news. And coming up next, as mentioned, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's address to the UN General Assembly. And that's the JBS News Update for Monday, September the 30th, 2024. I'm Tisha Bader. Am Yisrael Chai.